Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin, the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing. And <laughs> look at this. We're back to Lock and Load Tactical Digital because we seem to do so much work with it. So what have we got here? New DLC release for you today. What are we looking at? Valor of the 13th, which is a DLC for Heroes of the Motherland. But I can hear you saying, wait a minute, well, Heroes of the Motherland isn't out yet. You're right. Strap in. It's going to get a little bit bumpy on how we explain this. So Heroes of the Motherland is probably not going to be released for a few months yet. Uh, the basic fact is that it's got a lot of maps in it and a lot of maps that our map guy has to kind of redo because in the original Heroes of the Motherland, some of the scenarios would say, oh, take map X and put a couple building hexes on it and ignore the river. Well, we don't like doing that, and it doesn't really work that well in the digital. So we kind of got to redraw all the maps that have those little alterations on it from scratch. And that's about 15, 14, 16 maps, somewhere around there. I don't know the exact number, but it's a lot. It's still going to be several months before Heroes of the Motherland is actually ready. Um, and we wanted to get the German East Front and the Russian counter sets out to you guys so you guys can use them in the battle generator and the scenario editor so you can start doing East Front maps. So we've kind of released an expansion DLC before the <laughs> before the main game is even out, and that's kind of the reason why. Um, we've been kicking Valor the 13th around for year year and a half two years i guess and we just decided this was probably a good time to go ahead and release it um and that's basically the reason why we're releasing the dlc slash expansion before the main game is because it's still going to be a long time before we get heroes of the motherland out we wanted to get you those counter sets so what exactly is valor of the 13th well the biggest thing with valor of the 13th is that we've got a new set of optional rules uh, that you can play with four vehicles. So let's go ahead and head back to the main menu real quick. Let's go ahead and click on, as you can see, a bunch of people playing, uh, playing it because we've released the game today. Uh, let's see, where is it? Options, under game rules. And this is where you're going to find all the game rules out. So like the vehicle size modifier, vehicle speed modifier, 5.1 flammable hex checks, 5.1 hull down rules, 5.1 artillery rules. And here it is right here. Operate optional penetration damage. Ignore that. Uh, that rule 14.1.4 was the original rule number that we were going to work and integrate it into 5.1. But we decided now, since we're starting to put a lot of optional rules in, let's go ahead and make our own rule section for the optional. So don't pay attention to that. We've, that kind of slipped through us because that's what it was originally when Tom started working on this. Um, so what, what does that actually mean? Well... The actual rules themselves are finished to a point where Tom could program them into the game, but we haven't got them fully edited. So under normal circumstances, you would have the rules PDF, click on that, and it would take you to the uh, library lock of the bookcase. You click on it. I'm sure you've all seen it. And there would be the uh, Valor the 13th module rules. We're still editing it. We're still tweaking it just the way we want to and hopefully within a week we should get the actual rules pdf for valor the 13th put up but ba and we've posted the rules on the steam forums just go on there and look for valor the 13th david has gone ahead and and put up basically a summary of what these new optional rules are basically what it is is when you shoot at a tank now and when you penetrate a tank there's a chance for different types of damage depending if you hit in the turret if you hit in the hull um you can end up you know damaging the turret you can you knock the turret out you can damage the gun you can stun the crew you can damage the tracks you can destroy the tracks and all those have different abilities uh different effects on the vehicle and it just basically expands the 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 rules for vehicle combat a little bit more and like i said if you don't like it it's completely optional just go ahead and push the button and say i don't want to play with it and push the button off so you know you don't have any any problems with that for the most part at the end of the day when you roll to penetrate if you penetrate the vehicle 
Um, and honestly, when you're penetrating, when you roll your to hit, you know where you're going to be hitting either. It's going to be the hole of the turret. Um, when you decide if you've penetrated, you roll 2d6 as a follow up. And then there's going to be a, a chart that you look at, the 2d6 chart, and that's going to affect what happens. Basically, if you get a 7 through 12, it's still going to be a vehicle destroyed. Actually, it's 7 through 10 is a vehicle destroyed. 11 through 12 is a critical hit, which destroys the vehicle and destroys all passengers and crew in it. Uh, so there's that. But if you roll six or less, you could have, uh, depending on where you hit, if you hit in the hole, it's going to be a track hit. You could lose um, half your mo half your movement. You can Your tracks can be completely knocked out and the vehicle can no longer move. Uh, the turret can be jammed in place. You can roll a dud. If there's a, if you roll a two, hey, you may have penetrated, but oh, sorry, dud round. It just, if for whatever reason, it just didn't penetrate as well as it should have or it didn't hit a critical point whatever reasoning it's a no effect uh you can destroy the gun there's a, there's a whole bunch of well yeah there's 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 several different results that you can get if you roll under uh, a six or less um so it's just our way of expanding the vehicle rules a little bit and like i said we've been we've been kicking these around for a couple years now um so if you want to know what the exact details are go over to the steam forums and i will should probably also put them up on facebook so I may do that when I get done with this. Um, all right. So what it, what is Valor of the 13th? So Valor of the 13th is a module that covers the uh, actions during Kursk uh, of the 13th Army defending uh, Ponyari Rail Station and the hill directly east of Ponyari and the fields to the east of that. Now, the maps in this don't actually cover, cover Ponyari. It covers uh, Hill 235, which Panari was part of and is just to the east of Panari. Uh, and uh, a lot of the fields, like I said, to the east of that. Um, ten scenarios in this one. Two of them are monster scenarios. Uh, normally, when we do these, we try to keep the counter count uh, with... Well, actually, we, we do keep the counter count for what it is in the tabletop so you can... So basically, we can kind of double dip. We make the DLC and we also sell the, the, the scenario book for the tabletop version. Um, but this time we decided, you know what, let's go a little bit crazy with this because, you know, this is Kursk. It's supposed to be big scenarios, lots of armor vehicles. We can highlight our new armor optional rules. So we've got a couple scenarios in here that are much bigger than what we've seen before. There's one scenario that's got like 35 tanks in it total on both sides and a couple of them. Germans are driving around eight Tiger tanks with Schirra Panzer Abteilung uh, Oh, my German totally, uh, totally, totally abandoned me there. Uh, Heavy Panzer Battalion 504. Uh, the 45 Tigers that were at that at the northern uh, shoulder of Kursk. Um, so, yeah, Valor of the 13th. It, we, we've got two huge maps. I'm going to go ahead and show you this real, real quick. So let's go ahead and just bring up uh, Holding the Shoulder. Uh, and let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at one of the two new big maps. Wait for it to load up. There we go. All right. It takes a little bit because there's a lot there. Okay. Look at how big this map is. I mean, this thing is absolutely huge. Now, some of you sharp-eyed observers may say, hey, that looks like the map from Dark July. You're right. It is the map from Dark July. We just took the map from Dark July and took all the wheat fields off of it, added a few more things in, took the rail yard that was here off of it. Um, since this is kind of Kursk and Kursk was fought over a lot of big open plains, we figured, you know what? This would make a really good tank map. Um, so this is this is this is the bigger of the two maps. And it's not bigger than the other one by much. Um, but we, we got a lot of really good scenarios. A lot of these are focusing on a lot of armor fights. We're seeing a lot of tanks in these scenarios. Some of these scenarios probably are not really beginner friendly. Um, I wouldn't say these are advanced scenarios, but they're definitely not beginner friendly. Just due to the size and the sheer weight of vehicles and the sheer weight of units that are. I mean, there's one scenario in here that have got uh, close to 30 Soviet infantry squads. So, like I said, we went a little bit big with this one. Uh, so there's this map, which, like I said, is the Dark July map that we just kind of repurposed. And uh, it really does change the entire flow of the of this, how this map feels uh, because it doesn't have the wheat fields on it. So this is a great tank map. So let's go ahead. And that's one of the maps. Let's go ahead and exit game. Let's go take a look at the other map that we've got. Where is it here? Here we go, up to the top. And this is the second giant map that we've got in this. 
And this is a uh, Hill 253.5, which was basically as you're looking at this, this is the hill right here. Um, Ponyari would be, you know, just basically a few hexes. The, the, the city of Ponyari or the rail station, the village, would just be a few hexes over in this direction. So you're, you're pretty much right on top of uh, Panyari Rail Station. But we love this map because it's got a bunch of on-printed trench lines and it's got this beautiful, these beautiful craters and these foxholes. And we've got a little command center right here. You can kind of see this camouflage netting and you got the, the trench lines connecting the, 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 the weapons emplacements. And we've got some buildings and some more foxholes. I, it's just absolutely beautiful map. So yeah, this is the other map. Uh, and basically it's five map or five scenarios on each map. So and since I designed them, uh, <laughs> I tried to make them as varied and as interesting as possible. So you're not going to see the same type of situation crop up. It's like, oh, we're, the Germans are attacking up the hill from this direction again. Or, you know, I, I did as much as I could to, to break up the battles as, mu as much as I could. And like I said, two of them are really big. One of them has close to like 35 vehicles in it. But uh, so, yeah, that is uh, that coupled with the new vehicle rules. We figured, hey, curse, lots of vehicle fighting got to have got to put in the new vehicle rules for a cursed scenario but the biggest also the, the most important thing and i did kind of mention this a little bit earlier is that this in the battle generator now gives you the counters the oobs from heroes of the motherland because like i said it's going to take us a while to get that out um so if we wanted to do the battle generator let's just go ahead let's see uh, let's go with uh let's say uh, what 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 uh, maps do we have? Let's, uh, da, 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 where's Heroes of Normandy? I know I have Heroes of Normandy in here somewhere. Where's our Heroes? Oh, there it is. Heroes of Normandy. We'll use. Let's say we we'll go with the Heroes of Normandy map set. But let's say we want to use uh, uh, the Germans uh, and the Soviets. So let's go ahead and we'll set up a battle generator. So now you have the Eastern Front. Here's all the Soviet squads. SMCs. Now we do also have a guards option if you want to play the guards because the guards were in there. Here's the squads, support weapons for the Soviets, weapon teams for the Soviets, vehicles for the Soviets, fortifications, offboard artillery, yada, yada, yada. Yep, I know I'm not buying anything. And then the East Front Germans from Heroes of the Mulland. We got SMCs. We've got the squads support weapons, weapon team. So basically we're giving you, ah, there we go. The, the Panther, the Tiger, the King Tiger. I mean, we got some really cool vehicles in there that we haven't seen in digital before. Fortifications, off board, that's fine. And of course, you know, you know what the map looks like. Um, so that will allow you to now be able to use the battle generator and the scenario editor to get the Soviets and these front Germans into your own scenarios that you wanna play. Uh, normally on, uh, it goes for, it, normally it sells for $9.99, but we've got like a 10% discount right now. So it's like eight something and yeah, Christmas sales coming up. So, you know, if you don't want to pick it up right now, we might be having it as part of a steam Christmas sale coming up. Um, so yeah, that's Valor of the 13th, 10 scenarios over a five or six, I, I created the scenarios five or six day period fighting over those two maps uh we're seeing a lot of bigger scenarios in this i hope people enjoy it uh if you got any questions comments concerns complaints criticisms hit the forums and we do have a couple threads already up explaining exactly what the specific rules for the new vehicle ordinance armor rules are but if you just you know you don't want to deal with it you just want to play with the normal base 5.1 just go into preferences under options and just turn it off it's no big deal um so yeah there we go valor the 13th released today i do also want to point out where is it heroes of the nom we are going to be having the next one that should be released is a pledge of honor which is a um, eight more scenarios for heroes of the nom and uh, I'm, I'm really proud of this one. I'm, I'm really happy with how these scenarios turned out. Uh, eight scenarios in that one. Uh, of course, NVA and VC, but I had two, U I've got, we've got two US Army, two Marine, two Anzac, and two 
uh, Arvin scenarios in there. So we got a little bit from everything. We've got uh, some some scenarios from later in the war. Most of us, uh, the scenarios in Heroes of the Nam go up to about 68, 69. Uh, about half the scenarios in A Pledge of Honor are 71 and later. We've got uh, a couple scenarios in there fighting in Way in the Citadel just because it was such a huge fight. Uh, we've got some armor scenarios in there. Arvin versus uh, NVA armor. A lot of really cool stuff in that. Um, so that should be the next uh, the next expansion set that is coming out. Uh, yes, Heroes of the Bitter Harvest. We are working on the Kickstarter for that right now. For the most part, everything is already done. I've got a couple little tweaks I need to do with the campaign in it yet still. Um, but we're working on getting the Kickstarter that up. I'm hoping we have that up before the end of the year, but I can't really say. Uh, if you are wondering, Valor the 13th will be available for sale eventually. Uh, we had to get, we're going to have to get some counters printed up because, like I said, we do have the two big monster scenarios in here. Tigers on the Prowl and uh, Cats to the Highland. Those are the big scenarios. Um that we wanted the people who have the tabletop to be in play as well so we've got to we had to print up some extra counters because there's lots of tigers and lots of t-34s that there just wasn't enough in the counter mix of heroes of the muddleland to be able to do um and plus it'll come with the two oversized giant maps those will not be in 4k i mean the maps are big enough as it is if we were to do them in 4k they'd just be insanely huge and they wouldn't fit on anybody's table um but that should be coming soon uh here's the bit of harvest coming soon pledge of honor coming soon uh that's all i've got for now questions comments concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below i'll talk to everybody later Hey, uh